I'd like to retell a familiar tale called The Orange Quarrel to illustrate what we mean by beyond win-win. This story is adapted from Getting to Yes by Fisher and Yuri at Harvard University. It was a rather explosive situation because two children were using adversarial methods that ignored the interests of the other party. Both children wanted the only orange, and they were heading for a lose-lose situation, destroyed orange, or at best, win-lose if one child overpowered the other for the whole orange. Fortunately, a clever mediator came along with a good idea. Jenny cut, Joey choose. This was a good solution and a win-win solution compared to what could have happened in an all-out fight. All things being equal, this seemed like a pretty fair solution. Both children got 50% of what they wanted. But it turns out that we can do even better than this when we recognize that there are two important objectives that help us achieve superior agreements. Fairness and efficiency. Divide the benefits fairly and don't leave value on the table. The children in this conflict were using adversarial methods assuming a one-dimensional model of negotiations. Both children wanted the whole orange, and the problem was that if one was to get more, the other had to get less. The first step in solving this problem is to relabel these scales. Instead of thinking that each child wants 100% of the orange, consider rather that each child wants to become 100% satisfied. Now we can take these scales and reorient them so that we're viewing the case in multi-dimensional satisfaction space. Now it's no longer necessarily true that one party has to lose when another one gains. Recall the solution in our previous scenario. We did achieve our fairness objective. Both parties got 50% of what they wanted, but when we plot this solution on the graph, we see that there may be room for improvement. To further explore this, we dig a little deeper into our bag of interest-based principles and ask each child why they want the orange. It turns out that Jenny isn't interested in eating the orange. She wants to bake a cake that calls for the peels of exactly one orange. Joey, on the other hand, can never get enough oranges to eat, but always throws the peels into the waste bin. So now you know the optimal solution. Give Jenny all the peels and Joey all the fruit. They both get 100% of what they wanted, which achieves our efficiency objective. Now, wouldn't it be nice if all our problems were that simple? Most of us here would be out of a job, and we wouldn't need Smart Settle. Real cases are more complex. These types of problems have what we call an efficiency frontier. Very rarely can you get 100% for both parties, but you can almost always get more than 50-50. Smart Settle's objective is to find a fair solution on the efficiency frontier. The first person to get credit for a solution to the problem of helping negotiators reach a solution that is both fair and efficient was a brilliant mathematician named John Nash. You may have seen the movie A Beautiful Mind, which tells the story. Nash received a Nobel Prize in 1994 for work that he did over 40 years earlier at Princeton University. His most notable work is summarized in two papers. In the first paper, Nash said, without cooperation, competition leads to a non-optimal equilibrium. This non-optimal equilibrium has come to be known as the Nash Equilibrium. In the movie, Nash shows the paper to his math advisor. The professor says, this flies in the face of 150 years of economic theory. He was referring to the classical economic theory of Adam Smith, who argued that competition leads to efficiency. Smith said that self-interest could be led by the free market to produce the common good. Nash wasn't satisfied with proving that the status quo is inefficient. His next challenge was how to reconcile his conclusions with prevailing economic theory. His goal was to show how to move from the Nash equilibrium to an optimal solution. In his second paper, Nash wrote, 
With cooperation, negotiators can achieve a fair and efficient solution by maximizing the utility product. Maximize the utility product was the name of his algorithm, which, applied, can transform a non-optimal solution to one that is fair and efficient. You may be wondering why this idea hasn't taken off yet. After all, it's been over half a century since Nash explained how to do it. Great discoveries or inventions are not practical to implement unless they form part of a complete solution. As it turns out, there are also other ways to solve this problem. Professor Emeritus Howard Rafa at Harvard University documents a number of these methods in his publication, Negotiation Analysis. Rafa is considered by many as the foremost authority on this subject. One of these methods, called Maimonides, was developed by Robert Aumann, who was a recipient of a Nobel Prize in 2005, although not specifically for this work. Rafa's preferred method is called Maximize the Minimum Gain. This method has its origins in Dr. Ernest Thiessen's research at Cornell University and is implemented in the Smart Settle negotiation system. Here's some data from that research. Some parties negotiated without the computer and others negotiated with the computer. As predicted, those that used the computer reached the efficiency frontier. Let's pause it right there for a moment. This is a significant difference. If you haven't already implemented e-negotiation as part of your process, there's a good chance your deals look like the points in white here. The data revealed a 16% gain over traditional methods for each party. Nash correctly identified the essential ingredient as cooperation, but that has remained rather elusive. Dr. Barry Court at Cambridge said, moving from competition to cooperation remains an unsolved problem in game theory. This highlights the problem of bringing negotiators together in the first place. The alternative dispute resolution community is doing a good job of promoting cooperation through mediation, but mediation has not yet been widely adopted. Real people with real conflicts have had too many objections. I can't be sure that a mediator is really neutral. I wouldn't trust a mediator with my confidential information. No mediator is smart enough to understand our problem. Can we overcome these objections? Suppose this represents a complex multi-party problem. Smart Settle reduces inefficient direct communication by introducing a neutral site on the Internet which manages all confidential data. Private data is kept safe and secure. Transmissions are protected with bank grade encryption. The server has all the power needed to solve large, complex problems between any number of parties, negotiating conveniently, anywhere, anytime. Neutral, trustworthy, and smart. Smart Settle provides the mechanism to encourage parties to move freely from mutual distrust to effective collaboration. Like Adam Smith, it does not require parties to give up their self-interest, nor does it require them to give up their freedom to choose among alternatives. Like John Nash, it knows that collaborative methods produce greater benefits for everyone and can prove it. Unlike anything else available on the market, SmartSettle can deliver those increased benefits to all parties now.